Welcome back to the second episode of this new how to make a VR game series. In last video, we set up Unity for VR and made our own camera rig. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how to listen to VR input and use it to make our own animated hand. So you already know this video is made possible by Unity and the awesome people supporting my work on Patreon. And if like them, you want to have access to all of the source code of my project and two exclusive episodes on this series, join us, link in the description. Okay, so we are back where we were in last episode. Now to replace this cube by an animated hand, we could obviously make it ourselves in a modeling software like Blender. But to save me some time, what I like to do is actually use the end model from Oculus that you will be able to find in the description below. And after downloading this Unity package, we can simply drag it in the project windows. As you can see, this package contains some animation for the left and right hand, as well as an animator to control them. It also contains the material of the hand, the 3D model, and a prefab for each hand. So let's click on import. Once it is imported, let's navigate to Oculus and Prefabs. And I'm going to select both the cube we used in last episode. Press delete to remove them and replace this cube by dragging the left hand model under the left hand and the right hand model under the right hand. There you go. Now, as you can see, we have the two ends showing in our scene. Now let's have a better look at them. As you can see, this end has already an animator component that is used to manage its animation. So to open the animator panel, make sure that the end is selected and we can go to Windows, Animation, Animator. Perfect, so this has opened the animator panel and if we double click on Blend Tree and select Blend Tree, we can see in the preview down below that depending on the value of the grip and trigger parameters, the end will animate between four animations. And by the way, I made the animator step by step in my previous tutorial series. So if you want to learn more about how to make one yourself, go watch it. I will obviously leave a link in the description. So in short, what we need to do is use the input of the controller to update these two values. Finally, let's go back to our scene windows here at the top. And if we continue to explore this end that we just added, we will be able to find as a child the renderer of the hand with its material. So if you'd like to change the color of the end, you can do it here. For example, I'm going to change it to blue in my case. Oh, and if the material is pink, this might be because you are not using the universal rendering pipeline like I'm doing on this project. But you can fix this simply here by setting the shader to standard. Now, if we click on play, instead of two ugly cube, we have hands following our controller. Nice. But for now, when we press on any input on the controller, it does not change the animation of the hand. So let's learn how to read and use an input in VR to move our hand. Now to learn how to use input, let's first make a custom component to use it. I'm going to select one of the hand model let's say the right one, click on add component and we can create a custom component by writing the name we want there. So in my case, I will write animate hand on input, click on new script, create and add. And after letting Unity compile, here it is, we have our custom component added on the right hand. So let's open it by double clicking on the name. There you go. After some time, this should open a new Visual Studio page. This is where we will be able to code our custom component. And by the way, if you've never coded before, don't worry, I will try to give as much information as I can for you to understand what I'm doing. So to listen to an input in this component, we are going to write at the top using Unity Engine dot input system. And then inside the animate end on input class, public input action property pinch animation action. This will create a variable of type input action property that we will be able to use throughout our script with the name that we just gave. So pinch animation action in my case. And here by marking it as public, we will be able to set this variable in the Unity editor. Oh, so let me show you. We can save our script with Control S, go back to Unity, wait for the script to compile, and there it is, we have the variable we just made on the Unity editor. Now, as you can see, we have two ways to set the input here. 
we can create the action from scratch by clicking on that parameter icon, say if it's a button or a value, and then assign which input we want to listen by clicking on that plus button, add bindings, double click on the bindings, and for the pass, go to XR controller, XN controller, right hand, optional controls, and choose here the particular button we want to listen to. But to keep everything better organized on this project, it is best to use an action that was already made and not do this instead. So to use an already made action, let's click on use reference. And if you remember, in last episode, we already imported some in our project. So let's have a look at it by going to sample XR interaction toolkit or version starter asset. And all of the actions are here inside this XRI default input actions. So let's double click on it to have a better look. As you can see on the left, we have a list of maps for the action. The map does not actually do anything, but it's a good way to organize the action in different categories. So for example, if we have a look at the XRI right hand interaction, we have here the list of all actions already made for us. For example, if we select the activate action, we can see that this action is listened as a button. So this action will tell us if the button is pressed or not, but below the activate value will be listened as an axis value. So more than on or off, we will get from this action a value which will tell us how much the button is pressed. And finally, to know what button is linked to an action, we can click on the drop down here and as you can see, in the case of the activate action, it is the trigger pressed on the right controller that will call this action. So I know that this is a lot of information to take in one go, but I promise to you, this system will get simpler over time. So to sum up, in our case, for the pinch animation action, we have in our component, I want the value of the trigger button on the controller. So I believe that this activate value action will be perfect as it's listening to the trigger button and is already defined as a value. So let's close these windows, select our right hand model, make sure that the use reference is checked and I'm going to click on the drop down to see all action in the XRI default action and drag there the right hand activate value action that we saw in the script reference. Now that we have set the action we want, let's learn how to use them inside our script. So back again in Visual Studio, to know if the player is calling the action, I'm going to use the update function here that is called by Unity every frame of the game and do pinch animation.action.read value. Next, we want to set the type of value we want to get from this action. So if you remember, the action we are using is set as a value axis which will tell us how much the button is pressed. And in this case, we can write float. But for example, if the action was not a value axis, but a button that will only tell if it is pressed or not, it will be best to write bool over there. Now, I know this might be a bit confusing, but we will show later in this series some other example of input that I believe will clarify everything. So finally, let's finish by two brackets. And here it is, in just one line of code, we know the input of the trigger button. Now to use this function, what's best to do is store it inside a local variable with something like float trigger value equals, and this way I can use the name trigger value to get the input instead of having to write all of this again. Now let's test our input. And a quick way to do so, is to display it in the debug console. So for this, let's write debug.log trigger value. Now let's save our script and go back to Unity. And there it is, if I click on play, we can go to Windows, General, Console, and as you can see, every frame of the game, we have the amount the button is pressed displayed here. And if I press on the trigger button on the right controller, it works, the value is correctly shown. So this console window is actually really helpful to quickly test things, not just for inputs. Now we are one step away from making our end animated. So the only thing missing is to use the input that we have to change the parameters on the animator. So to do so, let's leave play mode and go back to our script. I'm going to create a new public animator called 
and animator. And finally, set its value in the update function with hand animator dot set float, the name of the parameter we want to target in the animator. So trigger in our case and its new value. So pinch value. Perfect. We can even remove the debug as we don't need it anymore. Save our script and go back to Unity. And before testing our game, we need to assign the animator we want to use. So in our case, let's drag here the animator component on the end model inside. Perfect. And now if we click on play, it works. As you can see, I can pinch the hand animation when pressing on the trigger button. Now what's left to do is to do the same, but for the grip button to animate the hand. So let's go once again in our script. Okay, so again, we are going to need the action we want to listen with public input action property grip animation action. And in the update, get the value with float grip value equals grip animation action dot action dot red value float. And finally, assign this value in the animator with end animator dot set float grip grip value. So let's save and go back to Unity. For this new action, we are going to add an already made action as well. So if we want to listen to the grip button on the right end and use it as a value, we can use the XRI right end interaction select value. There you go. Now let's click on play to try this. And just like that, in a matter of a few seconds, we have our end animating on both the trigger and the grip button. So congratulations if you managed to get this far, but you might notice that there is still a little bit of work to do because the other end is not yet animated. So this will be a good test for you if you have understood this tutorial. You can pause this video and try to do this on your own. Okay, so to do this on the other hand, let's select the left end model, click on add component and search for animate ends on input. We can click on use reference for both action and drag for the pinch action, the left end activate value and for the grip action, the left end select value. Finally, we can drag the left end animator component on the end animator parameter. And there it is guys, everything is now ready. Let's click on play to try this. So at this point, you should have both ends working and animating on the trigger and grip button. And this is one of my favorite parts of making a VR game. It feels so immersive. Now, thank you for watching till this point. In the next episode, we'll learn about locomotion system with both teleportation and continuous movement. So to not miss it, make sure to like and subscribe this video. If you'd like to have access of the source code of all of my projects, and two new exclusive episodes on this series, you can join our community on Patreon, link in the description below. And again, a big thanks to Unity for sponsoring this video. Have a great day and see you soon. Bye bye.